Welcome to my presentation on using GeoGebra to demonstrate parallel and perpendicular lines to students. By the way, this presentation is intended only for my Geo team. Hello, Geo team. I've used GeoGebra in the past. I'm not, uh, you know, very adept at it, but I have used it in the past. Uh, chapter nine comes to mind. But I've basically used a resource I got from Megan. This is my first time creating something on my own. This presentation is much improved over my first one that I did yesterday because that was literally my first pass through and because I will show you a couple more features today and offer some more information than I did before. I'm going to try to go through this really quickly. I apologize if it's uh, too fast, but again, you're in control of this presentation. You can pause it, fast forward, rewind, you know, whatever you need to do. So uh, let's start off. First thing you do is you go into the input field and you type in B equals one and then enter on your keyboard. Okay, and then what I did not show you yesterday is that you go up way to the top and for some reason the debut software won't allow me to do that. This video screen, this video capture software won't allow me to do that. But you go up way to the top and you click on options and then you click on font size. I believe you will be able to see that. And then you click on 24 point. I believe 24 point is a good size for students to see. You go back into the input field, type in M equals one, enter on your keyboard. I'll uh, discuss in a bit why I think it's best to use uh, B equals one and then M equals one. And then you type in Y equals MX plus B. And this is where the magic now begins to happen. You press enter and voila, you have the uh, line Y equals MX plus B. Also what you could do is you can um, right click on the uh, anywhere on the grid and create a grid. That way the students can uh, actually count up the rise over the run, right? And it can help them calculate slope visually. Okay, so that's something else I would recommend. Uh, this is where it uh, really uh, gets to be more powerful. I would uh, create a slider for the uh, y-intercept and, and then make sure this is on um, this cursor which moves um, objects and you can now show them what's happening visually, graphically when you change the y-intercept, okay? So I think that's pretty powerful, but it's gonna get even better. And I'll change this back to one. Then I would probably create a slider for the slope and show them what happens when you change the slope. Okay, that's kind of cute. And then uh, I would go to this uh, device here, um, this tool, and this is going to be um, my parallel line maker. So you click on this little triangle, it's a drop down menu, change it into a parallel line maker. What else is kind of cool about it is the students can create a, a parallel line, parallel to this line, through any point, and they get to select wherever they want that point to be. So I think that's kind of cool for the students as well. I'm going to create uh, my point here, it doesn't really matter, and I'm going to make it parallel to this line. So then you have to click on that line, and now you have a line that's parallel to this line going through, through this point. Then I would click on this tool and change it into a slope measuring device. Click on this line, and there's the slope, and then click on this line and show them that, of course, it's the same slope. And then what's neat about it is you go back to this, change it into a moving device. Um, I don't know if that's the right nomenclature, but that's what I call it. And then change the slope of this line, and you could see what concomitantly happens with the slope of the other line, right? It uh, remains the same. You have a slope of negative 5. This also has a slope of negative 5, etc. Slope of positive 5. I mean, all the you know increments in between. By the way, you can um, right-click on the line itself and you can change the parameters of the line and uh, of the slider rather you can change the parameters of the slider so that's how you can do that if you want to change the increments or the minimum minimum and maximum values I'm gonna keep it um, however at uh, between negative and five and five so bring that back to one I'm going to right click on this line and delete it I'll keep this point, however, and I'm going to change my parallel line maker into a perpendicular line maker through this point and perpendicular to this line. And then I will go to my slope measuring device, make it into a slope measuring device, and look at that. The slope of this line is negative one, voila. Um, voila, by the way, is uh, English for voila. That's my little joke that I tell my students. 
And the reason I like to use, or I like to at least start off with slope equals one, is because it's very easy for them to see, right, that um, the two slopes, or the slopes of perpendicular lines multiply and become negative one, or that they are opposite reciprocals of each other, right? Very easy, one times negative one is negative one. But then what you could do, uh, very powerful, create, turn that into a moving device again, you can change the slope of your original line, and you could change the slope of your original line, and you could see what happens to the slope of the perpendicular line in relation to that line. So you have a slope of negative 3.9, for example, and the other one has a slope of, two, of 0.26. And what I intend to do is have students take out their calculators and multiply the two numbers and see if they get negative 1. And then you can also have a discussion with students, um, hey, what does it mean if you got negative 1.001, right? So you can have that discussion with students. And, um, you know, it's really neat. So here's a, a slope of 2.5, and this one's negative 0.4. When you multiply those two slopes, do you get negative 1? Do you always get negative 1? Um, here's 5. 5 times negative 0.2. Uh, is that negative 1? Do you always get negative 1? So that's basically it. That's what I intend to do on uh, Monday, along with Adam's worksheets. And I think it's pretty powerful altogether. I think students begin to really understand the relationship between slope and y-intercept, how that fits into the equation, how they're related to each other, what happens when you change the parameters. Um, it's really good for uh, understanding the relationships and for getting a spatial graphic understanding of what's going on. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, if you uh, need any thing answered, please feel free to contact me at your convenience, and it would be my pleasure to help you. Okay, bye-bye.